So today we're going to show you how to assemble this catenary. We've got two types. We've got the type that's going to go over four lines and the second type which is going to go over two lines. But I'm going to only do the two line version today. So without further ado, let's show you how we make this and turn it into to this. This is my diorama. Based sometime between 1960 and 1982, although that past 56 doesn't in that livery doesn't blend in with anything from that period. But I'm going to show you how to model this catini, which is made by Torrey Laser Limited. And you buy these off eBay or from their website. I've got quite a few of them. But I shall show you how we're going to make the droppers and the part that supports the wire as it goes over the mass. So what you get with these kits is there's six parts. So you've got the basis, you've got the horizontal supports and you've got the two vertical supports. So they're all cut out nicely as you can see from there. They all slot together. I find a little bit of wood glue works wonders with them. They're made of MDF. So you just need a little bit of patience to put them together. And that slots in like that. So you then get your second horizontal. I'm trying to keep the first one in. And that goes like that. And you repeat the process on the other side and put the bases on like that. In true Blue Beater fashion, we've got one we've already made earlier. Now, your track will probably already pin down onto your layout. I haven't got that luxury here, so I've got my track and using a Pico gauge. I've set it like that. So the next thing you're going to want to do is, all depends what you're modelling, or what your model is, you might have a Batchman Class 85, or a Hornby Class 86 like this one is to line it up on your track with your catenary mass and you're going to have to work out whereabouts it is that you're going to want to put your droppers and at what height so really you want to set it to whatever pantograph runs the highest on your locos because you don't want it fouling as it goes underneath so I've actually tied some of these down to lower them a bit because when they're at that height, they were only at that height if they were in the depot or they were approaching a level crossing. Usually they run at a height which is probably somewhere down here but this pantograph is what it is. It's quite old now, it must be getting on for 40 years old. So it's really going to be down to you and your layout of how you're going to set this. But we'll get a pen and looking at this I can see that that's the central mark. So that's roughly where I'm running. And if we move it onto the next line, I know the track's moving underneath, we can see that that is roughly where you're going to be on the next one. So we've marked out whereabouts our droppers have got to go. So what you'll need now is some of this brass rod, which is 1.19 millimetres thick. You can use thinner if you like, but it serves its purpose. So you'll end up with a piece like this. So we need to form the shape of one of our droppers. So using a pair of pliers, 
it doesn't take much effort to bend one of these so we'll bend it over like that and we want a little bit of an angle coming down like that so all we need to do now is straighten this there you go there's your first dropper made right for the top part this is simple you just put it in your pliers and we're going to bend this straight over like that so it's at right angles and then using the cutted part in your pliers and I want trimming down a little bit but there's the over the gantry support for your wires the next thing we want to do is to make the insulators for our droppers that we've just made I'm not sure what this wire is called but it's quite solid and what I do is strip the sheafing back and take the part that's inside out. Now using a spare bit of brass rod or you can use the one like this is to hold your wire on and start winding round. I usually do eight turns on this Bunch it all together with your fingernails. Like that. Once you've cut that down, that's your first insulator made. You need to make four of those. So, we've made out of the three insulators and we've wound them on to the droppers and the overhead supports. And this is what you finish up with. They look quite nice and convincing. They look even better once you've painted the rod grey and this a shade of burgundy red. So we're now ready to glue our catenary supports in place. I use this stuff. We've got about 15 seconds to get it in place and it will stick solid. And I've had no problems with this coming undone. So, as we were discussing earlier about this Hornby pantograph, for me that just sits a little bit too high. But, your layout, you might want to run it like that. So, that is around about the right height for you to glue your support in. I'd prefer to have that a little bit lower and somewhere down here. But you're going to have to tie your pantograph down. Well, you could in fact glue it in place but if you're going to, if you are going to run your wires live perhaps somewhere around here would be the best place to to glue this support in but also remember that the real railways would stagger these supports so you'll have one facing this way your next support would be facing this way to pull the wire across so you get a zigzag effect and I shall show you this on the diorama the way that I've done this right so we've glued the first dropper into place and we've got a nice gap between the pantograph and where you're going to solder your wire to so the next thing we're going to do is move the engine across and we're going to solder the next one in so we've got our next dropper and it's the same process as the first one you're going to more or less want it just to go above the height of this pantograph or the height of your highest pantograph on your fleet of engines that you're going to run so I shall put a little bit more of this rocket glue onto this and I shall be back in a couple of seconds so we've glued those two into place and we've got a nice 
clearance gap between the two. If you don't get the right gap, there's always ways around it. You can put a little bit of plaster card underneath these to raise it. You'll also have to take into account if you're going to lay new track and you're putting cork underneath your rails, you're going to have to put the same amount of cork underneath these to rise it by the same height. Now we're going to come to the top of hangers which will support the, the wire as it goes over the mass. So what I do with this is just to tidy them up at the bottom. Let's just have a little file and try and get yourself a nice flat edge. don't take much work because these can be a bit of a pig to glue to the top of the, the mass so the more area you've got the better chance you've got of it gluing so we'll be back in a couple of seconds when we've glued these on right so that's that glued into place what I would usually do now is if you're going to use these with live wires like the Pico type that you can get, I solder the wires onto these droppers so cover this up, the bits that you're going to solder. I'll then take this out into your garage or your shed and using some car primer, spray the thing in primer. It will take a few coats because I say these are made out of MDF so the paint is going to soak straight into it. But you will end up with something that hopefully looks like this. When it has dried, get a little bit of red paint or a maroon coloured and paint your insulators. And that is how to turn those masks into something more representative of what is on the railways. So back to the diorama and the mass that I was telling you about. There's the stagger down the wires going left to right. And there's the class 86 that we were using in the demonstration video. And the sky's the limit with this really. On this mass down here. And just see under there I have added an LED light and just in front of that class 56 if it can pick it up there is a reed switch so when my batchman class 85 goes underneath it it flashes to give the impression of an arc I hope this video has been of use to you and it may inspire you to Make your own overhead catenary. Thanks for watching.